thank you for coming today to talk to us about your role as patron of the Huntington's Disease Association. Um, you became our patron in 2021 and you've done so much for us in terms of fundraising and just generally raising awareness of Huntington's disease. Um, George helped promote both of our May awareness campaigns, so Huntington's D Disease Awareness Month being in May. Um, he did My Family Matters in 2021 and Huntington's in Mind this year. And it was it was really fab to see you on programmes like Loose Women and BBC Breakfast News talking about mental health and Huntington's disease, um, as well as countless newspaper articles and magazines. So thank you for the work you do. Um, so my first question is, how did you first find out about Huntington's disease? Well, um, I mean... I have to be honest, I, I was quite ignorant and didn't know an awful lot about Huntington's disease at all until the storyline was pitched to me back in 2015. And I was uh, I learned that my character, Ethan, was to discover that his uh, I don't want to go into too much detail because it's um, a long winded story that was take place over several months. But he found out that the mum he thought was his mum wasn't his mum and his biological mother had given him up for adoption and was symptomatic HD positive and his brother I mean dramatic license got them both tested uh, in private and he and Ethan finds out that he's HD positive so I had to uh, well as an actor research um, as much as I could about about the disease and that's and how I just sort of learned more about it and um, Carol Royal who played my mum was already working quite closely with the um, with Kath and, and the HDA because she was sort of uh, playing the like the, the later stages, um, and so she wants to portray her her um, character authentically, obviously. Um, and then the storyline sort of um, took a, a bit more of a backseat for for a number of years um, while they shine light on other things, and and then it came back where Ethan had a storyline involving um, a pregnancy. With his partner who didn't know that he had the uh, Huntington's gene and so we were kind of exploring that um, debate between everyone's right for privacy and perhaps the sort of ethical responsibility of honesty and, and, and that kind of thing so I then was put in touch with Kath again because I had a load of questions because I wanted to portray it obviously authentically and um, and not take and cut any corners I suppose and um, and then we just I became involved with the Family Matters campaign after that and um, and came onto Zooms and spoke to some families and yeah it's gone from there really. Brilliant, thank you. Yeah, that leads me on to my question about you actually got involved with the My Family Matters campaign, campaign last year and you got to spend some time. It had to be virtually because uh, of the time of year, but with families affected by Huntington's disease, how how was that? I mean, it it was it was amazing. It was inspiring and informative and and, and humbling. And, and um, it, it, I suppose I hadn't given a, a enough consideration to the role of a carer, and that was incredibly moving, speaking to some people whose role that was. And then uh, I, I suppose my overall takeaway was that it, it's incredibly individual, personal family experience, but then the campaigns like that, pulling together resources and information and, and, um, and support, it can be incredibly uh, useful for, for people living with Huntington. So yeah, after that, I was really keen to be involved wherever I could. I think some of the things that came out in that campaign was how little other people, general public knew about it. And I just felt that if I could raise any awareness that I'd be really keen to. Um, it did obviously start virtual, as you said, but um, I then was keeping in touch actually with a, um, a lady, Gillian, who's, who does a lot of work with the Scottish Huntington's disease. And um, she mentioned that she was a big casualty fan and she's a real life nurse. So she wanted to be um, a background artist. So I got her and another lady, Nikki, down to Cardiff. I think it was last summer and they got to be um, background artists for the day, which was fun. Okay. Um, yeah, Gillian got to be an actual nurse oh, wow. and Nikki, I think was a porter. Um, and those episodes have gone out now. So that was great as well, just to sort of, um, yeah, Brilliant. allow her that experience. So what, what was it that made you want to, to sort of decide to become a patron? I think the fact that uh, some of the information I, I, I received was that lots of people hadn't heard of it and people didn't understand how to deal with it and I wanted to shine a light. I think you know other conditions and 
uh, get get a lot of press and I just felt if I was any, if there was any way of highlighting it beyond the storyline that it would be a, you know a good thing. Thank you George thank you and um, you have raised lots of money for us by doing some really interesting and challenging challenges can you tell us a bit more about what you've done? Yes yeah, so I was racking my brains I'm, I'm a keen runner so I am um, uh, I wanted to do something that would take me out of my comfort zone and, and, and time with helping uh, raise some money. And uh, so I did this uh, event called the Druids Challenge, which was a three day ultra marathon uh, near where I live. And it, it, it tracked the, um, the Ridgeway, which is a, an, an ancient sort of route, um, about 87 miles through the countryside. Um, so I did that last November and then I just done the London Marathon. And I'm hoping to do the London Marathon again next year. And uh, and by the way, congratulations to if anybody's on the Zoom for not only the London Marathon, but I've been reading about all sorts of crazy and interesting challenges. So just really well done to everybody. Um, sadly, my bag went awry during the... Um, <laughs> it didn't manage to get on the lorry at the London Marathon, so I wasn't able to get over to the post-event um, sort of party. But um, hopefully in April, if I get a spot, then I can come and, come and meet some people then. Um, and then next year, I'm planning to do an, another big sort of crazy ultra marathon thing, which is in Jersey, and it's it's called Round the Rock. It's a 48 mile mm -hmm. in one go uh, run. So that's the plan. <laughs> we'll see. Brilliant, thank you. And that that was my final question. Really. So what what is next for yourself? Well, in terms of challenges, those, um, and in terms of storylines that could perhaps highlight. Um, this hasn't gone out yet, but um, if anybody does watch Casualty, uh, which this is a spoiler, um, Ethan takes, I'm, I'm taking a short break at the moment, uh, ma mainly because I, I'm to and fro from England to Cardiff and I, I just need to be around a bit more. But um, so it's tied in with Huntington's in that I Ethan decides he's, he's got this young son who he, he co-parents and um, he decides that experiences and family essentially are more important than his career, which is um, he goes for a promotion and then decides actually he doesn't really want to. And so they, they've kind of tied that in with the storyline so that he, he goes off for a, um, to go traveling with his son for a little bit. Um, so I think, you know, it's hopefully a, a realistic kind of uh, thought. Brilliant. Thank you. And thanks for your time today, George. Not thanks at for all. Us. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much, George. George, on behalf of the association, I just want to say thank you so much for all that you do. It's really appreciated. I'm really happy that you've really lent into HD. Thanks a million, George. All right, take much care. really good to have you. Thank take you. care.